Okay, so I finished heating it and I think it's completely black now. And what we need to do is give it a little time and see how it settles. And I'll have to stir it occasionally because it is boiling. I don't know if you can see that. You can hear it a little bit. If I don't stir it, it will do what's called bump. I want to let it cool slowly. Uh, a trick you can do if you think uh, that you're going to have the hot plate too hot, you can just move it off to the corner because it turns out the corner of the hot plate is a lot cooler uh, than the uh, middle. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on this. And again, we'll run a time lapse, but you can see the precipitate is starting to settle. Now you can see it's also boiling in there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Run the stir. That'll keep it from bumping. So I'll run this on a time lapse and let it settle once I get control of the temperature, but basically I'm just trying to control the temperature at this point. So I want you to see this, what's going on. Uh, so it's heating, right? It's done heating and the hot plate is actually off. But the hot plate surface is still hot, so you see those little blobs coming up around. That's actually little pockets where it gets hot enough to boil. And so it's actually doing what's called bumping. Now, this shouldn't bump like violently at this point, uh, but what will happen sometimes if you're heating it really strongly is that'll actually blow all the material out of the beaker. So now I'm gonna set it on a cool surface, which is actually just another hot plate. And you can really watch this thing settle down. We need that other hot plate to still be hot because what we're going to be doing is taking the liquid in uh, this reaction and pouring it out. And it contains all the things that didn't precipitate out. And we're going to be washing the precipitate by adding uh, aliquots or portions of water to it uh, to rinse out any remaining salts. The precipitate should stay in uh, the beaker but what will happen is by adding a liquid to it will dissolve anything that's soluble the precipitate is obviously not soluble because it's a precipitate um, but we'll be washing all the soluble things out so in the end what we should be left with is water and then the copper oxide product Okay, so I'm going to show you how to decant the liquid. This is kind of technique based, so and it requires two hands. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do it like this around the camera. But the way you do this, and this is a waste speaker, and this is just one of those things that's useful to have around. Um, it allows you to uh, do your experiment and not have to leave your work area as much. So the first part is to decant the liquid. And the second part, we don't want to lose any of the solid. And I kind of screwed up by jostling it. You can see how light that precipitate is. It floats around in there. Okay. So I'm going to try to decant this off. And this is how you do this. Now, in principle, when you do this, you don't want to pour any of the precipitate off. That's your product. That contains the copper we're trying to recapture at the end. So that's a pretty good first decanting. It doesn't look great. There's a lot of liquid in there still. But the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add water to it and then let it settle again and we'll pour that off. And, and another thing, just to sort of keep track of, uh, you know, it's it makes things go a lot faster if you have things ready to go. So have the 100 mils of water prepped before you need it. There we go. And you can see that's just all cloudy again. So we're going to give it a few minutes to decant or to uh, to settle and then we'll decant it again.
So I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see how cloudy that is. That's from the addition of the 100 mils of water. Uh, we need to heat it. Um, that often helps it to clear up. I'll talk about that in a second. So we'll turn the stir back on and we'll turn the heat back on. All right, so we've heated this up some more. So we'll turn the stirring off and you can see it settle. We'll place it over here. We'll keep an eye on it, see if it doesn't settle out a little better than it did the first time. It's just the momentum of the water carrying the crystals around still. Now, typically this comes out clear after you've heated it. And it may not make sense to you at this point, but when we look at crystals like this, these are actually copper oxide crystals. When we're looking at crystals like this. When we heat them, they actually partially dissolve and then they re-precipitate out again. And it turns out when they re-precipitate out, it's easier for them to precipitate out on another copper oxide crystal. And so all that really light, light, really fine copper oxide that we saw earlier ends up re-dissolving when we heat it. And then when it precipitates out, it forms larger crystals. Those larger crystals, because of their sort of increased mass, uh, will settle out faster in solution. And then you get a clearer, clearer, I should say, not necessarily clear, but a clearer solution above the precipitate when you do that. So we'll let this go for a little bit. And once it's done, We'll go ahead and decant this, and then we'll continue on uh, with the next step. I just picked this up and moved it, and you can see how much clearer it is because we've allowed those crystals to grow from what we, what we call it is cooking it. So now we can decant and try to get rid of uh, the excess water, and then we can move on to the next step. Trying to move slowly. Give you a clear view of what's going on. So again, the only thing that should be left behind is the copper oxide and a little bit of water. But the washing removes most of the other impurities. I feel like I'm going to lose a little bit too much here. So what I'm going to do is a pipette to take a little bit more liquid off. So the way you do that, just go like this. It may not work. Yeah, I don't think there's enough to get rid of. So we'll just leave it. But you can use a pipette sometimes to get that top layer off. So that's my black copper oxide. All right. We'll look at it from the top too. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but All right, you can see it's pretty finely divided as with small particles. Those are the crystals. 